The U.S. will stand by Taiwan despite its upcoming transition of power. That's the gist of a speech by AIT director Brent Christensen over the weekend. The de facto U.S. ambassador to Taiwan said U.S. arms sales will continue under the incoming administration to assist with Taiwan's development of defensive asymmetric warfare. Local observers say Christensen's talk was a break from the usual low-key approach of the U.S. de facto embassy and was meant to reassure the Taiwanese people that the U.S.'s long-standing relations with Taiwan will not change. In the four years since U.S. President Donald Trump took office, there have been 10 weaponry packages sold to Taiwan. Now that the White House is getting a new resident, the situation won't change all that much, according to AIT director Brent Christiansen. He also used the occasion to announce that next year we'll see the U.S. sell Taiwan 5.2 billion U.S. dollars worth of arms and that they were undergoing the process of congressional notification. He said there has long been a bipartisan consensus on the need for the U.S. to fulfil its obligations under the Taiwan Relations Act and that the trend will continue in the next administration. In the past, cooperation between Taiwan and the U.S. has always been relatively low-key. In particular, they don't make announcements to the public when cases have not been fully completed. What AIT Director Christiansen tried to convey this time is that the U.S. will not change its relations with Taiwan because of Biden's victory. He wants to put to rest any internal concerns in Taiwan about changes in Taiwan-U.S. relations after Biden takes office. President Tsai has also pointed out at a press conference that Taiwan-U.S. relations will not change due to the Democrats coming to power. And Christiansen's remarks also helped affirm President Tsai's message. Christiansen also mentioned that the Taiwan-U.S. Economic Prosperity Partnership Dialogue, conducted recently, was designed to strengthen substantial economic and trade cooperation between the two countries. He praised President Tsai's new southbound policy, which allows companies to diversify, lowering the risks they face in China. He criticised China's Belt and Road Initiative and how its related investment models around the world have become synonymous with corruption, extortion and debt. A very important part of the Belt and Road Initiative is the economy, and that's what Trump doesn't offer. But this is an area that a democratic government is better at. Therefore, Biden's most important priority may be to quickly repair relationships with the U.S.'s allies and then quickly catch up an economic cooperation with its allies so that it won't lag behind RCEP. Whether this includes re-signing the TPP, it really remains to be seen. In the days leading up to Biden taking office, the U.S. representative office in Taiwan is both praising democratic Taiwan and blasting authoritarian China. The message it's trying to convey is quite clear.